cohesion. Sometimes such writings where we have argumentative type of text or where we have discussions, we need to look at the factor of cohesion and coherence. We need to look at the dialogues which are being written or the arguments which are being made, they, whether they do have some cohesion or coherence in their writing. And this is actually mostly done at a higher level. We don't really talk about cohesion or coherence in the primary uh, schools because it is a language which is developed gradually. So English has to be developed gradually in schools and this topic of cohesion and coherence would be a little advanced for the primary school children. So this uh, type of technique we would look for in a personal response for uh, uh, the uh, secondary school children or the higher school children that whether they are able to produce cohesion and coherence in their writing. And that again they would look at the reading that they are doing, whether there they can find the cohesion and coherence in the text and whether the teacher has instructed them about it. This is a bit of a difficult task for the teachers, I do understand, because it is more on the advanced level. But I just wanted to mention this one as well, because it is an important part of the reading and writing process. So it should be in the knowledge of the teachers that there can be some advanced students in the class where in such texts as argumentative texts, or the discussion texts, or maybe sometimes there are some texts which are having a dialogue, there has to be a cohesion or a coherence in the text. For that purpose, the teachers, they need to know about it and they need to point out to the students that there can be noticed some cohesion or coherence in the lesson, due to which the students would have a personal response towards that and they would also be able to identify if there is any coherence in the lesson and they would also be able to produce it in their writing and develop their skills of writing in different forms of text. Because when we are reading different types of text, we also need to produce different types of text. We can't be uh, confusing different texts in one text. For example, as I said, most of the scientific uh, texts are based on procedural texts. So we can't, cannot be writing them as a narrative text, whereas more of literature or language is based on narrative text. So the students need to know the difference between these texts and then have a coherence in their writing as a personal response to the reading that they have done until and unless they are aware of these features in their reading exercises or in their reading examinations, they would not be able to produce it as a, a productive skill in their writing forms. So in order to, I repeat always that in order to uh, produce good writing, you need to do good reading. So in order to know the features of writing, you need to know the features of reading and then only you will have an example in front of you that there is coherence there and there has to be coherence in our writing as well. So all these things are noticeable as features when you are reading a text and it is the job of the teacher. Maybe she can take more time on one reading exercise but she needs to look at all these features so that the students, they are aware of it, they can identify it, and then they can use the same practice while they are doing writing on their own. And they become independent learners when they are aware of all these features. While they are aware of these features, that means that they are being uh, skilled in that particular skill and they have a personal response towards that and thus they become independent learners.